Each week, American History TV's Real America brings you archival films that help to tell the story of the 20th century. The Secret Service story is a 1953 Treasury Department film depicting a new recruit learning about counterfeiting, self-defense, and the protection of the president. The safety of the president was added to the duties of the Secret Service after the assassination of William McKinley in 1901. Secret Service Director Julia Pearson resigned following a congressional hearing into security breaches. In one, a man jumped the White House fence and made it through the front door and into the East Room before being stopped. The chief wanted me to see our White House detail and to learn a little about our most important job of protecting the president. The White House police are part of the Secret Service and it's their job to protect the executive mansion and grounds. I guess it'll be a long time before folks forget how these men stopped an attempt to kill the president at Blair House, and how one of them gave his life in the performance of his duty. I had always thought the Secret Service protected the president since the service was established back in 1865, but Walter explained that this duty actually began with Theodore Roosevelt after the assassination of President McKinley in 1901. Before that, there was no regular protection. Today, of course, watching over the president is the number one job of the Secret Service. Walter introduced me to several of the men on our White House detail, and while we waited for the president to come out, I got a lot of information about this phase of the work. For instance, Walter told me how important the local police are and how the Secret Service gets fine help from them. Suppose the president is to attend a banquet at a hotel. The entire security plan, including routes of travel, timing, posts of duty, and preparation of orders, is discussed by the Secret Service with the chief of police and his staff. When the plans are completed, the building in which the banquet will be held is carefully inspected from cellar up. Even the preparation of food is supervised. If the president goes by train, he occupies a specially built armored railroad car. In advance of his trip, the Secret Service has talked with railroad officials, arranged for protection of the train along the way, and sent advance agents ahead to see that the schedule is followed as closely as possible. In crowds, most of the Secret Service men keep as inconspicuous as possible. Many will mingle with the people or patrol the fringe of the crowd. Others keep vigil in automobiles close to the crowd. And by means of two-way radio, they keep in touch with each other and with the White House detail. In this way, they know exactly where the president's motorcade moves and exactly when it will approach the crowd. If you've attended gatherings where the president has appeared, you've probably noticed a few young men who stay close to the president, but who keep their eyes on the spectators and not on the speaker. What do they look for? Oh, many things. Bulky or suspicious packages, movements which might mean danger, or sometimes just autograph hounds or gate crashes with purely personal objectives. These are the Secret Service agents who are prepared to give their own lives to protect the Commander-in-Chief. Each of these men must be tactful, firm, agile, decisive, quick of thought and quick of act. For no Secret Service man can tell when his training and his judgment may save the life of the President of the United States. You can watch Real America every weekend on C-SPAN 3's American History TV. And you can view our archive of programs online at cspan.org. Search for Real America and browse the topics.